The book of Acts exists to fill the theological gap between the epistles and the gospels while simultaneously filling the literary gap between the gospels and the epistles. <laughs> the title of the book, officially The Acts of the Apostles, is a bit misleading as we only really focus on one apostle, Peter, and then we just kind of lose track of him and pretty quickly go follow Paul around on a bunch of aimless wanderings. Yeah, they spent four entire books telling the same Jesus story, you know, and now I'm all excited that Anything else is about to right. happen. All they did was the same bullshit stories again with, like, new names. I think they really peaked a little early on Jesus dying. Should have saved not... that for the end, yeah. Good move. And, of course, it just wouldn't be the babble without Lucinda's adorable giggle. Lucinda, Jesus is dead. Why the fuck are we still reading this thing? Hey, I asked myself the same question at least once a verse. All right, well, then let's get this one the fuck over with, huh? Well, the first post-Jesus thing they need is a new apostle to replace Judas, after the contradictory hanging, headlong, gut-spilling he did. So they settle for some dude named Matthias. Because, come on, what are you going to do? You're going to run around being the 11 apostles without, <laughs> you're going to look like a bunch of assholes. So. And it must have been this awkward moment for the other guy named Judas the right? whole time. He's like lobbying for nicknames. <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys should, maybe you call me Adolf from now on. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like it's going to be complicated for everyone to keep it straight. You're Judas, son of James. We'll say the whole thing every time. We promise. <laughs> just relax over there, Christ killer. <laughs> so all the apostles are hanging out in Jerusalem like Jesus told them. And a few days later, God reaches out like a flaming octopus and touches all of them <laughs> with tongues of fire. So they all start speaking differently. <laughs> Kind of odd. Right. All the languages in the world, except the ones God hadn't heard of yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> Here, here's the passage. Quote, Now there were staying in Jerusalem Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. End quote. What are the so, odds? <laughs> yeah, we've got 12 idiots having a circle jerk with a kraken and screaming nonsense at the top of their lungs. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it, the very next hotel room has the entire U.N. General Assembly, so they right. all, all notice each world language specifically, and yeah. therefore Jesus. Right, yes. Real. It's a real so, thing happened there. Of course, all the townspeople assume at first that they just got drunk on, like, spontaneous osmotic linguistic booze, <laughs> so they dismiss it until Peter sets them straight. It's like, guys, it's yeah. 9.30 in the morning. They're not drunk. Come on. Come on. <laughs> And he invokes Joel here to tell everyone that this marks the beginning of the last days. Yeah. So the last three quarters of a million days plus <laughs> start <laughs> right there. <TikTok. laughs> exactly yeah. that moment. No. And then Peter makes this big Jesus definitely came back from the dead. And if you don't believe us, just ask a speech. And everybody in earshot immediately becomes a Christian. <laughs> then Peter and John heal a crippled dude. And when all the Jews say, hey, that was nifty. Peter responds by telling them to go fuck themselves for killing Jesus. He did a lot of that. <laughs> he did. And his whole speech sounds like he's wearing a wire, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> Remember that really good wine we had the day after all you Jews killed Christ? What grape was that? All you Jews killed Christ and what grape? Which grape? I heard someone say we killed Jesus Pinot Noir. Got it. <laughs> I'm writing that down. Jews killed Jesus Pinot Noir. Got it. All right, so now they get arrested for healing without a proper license or whatever, and then the judges ask them to stop talking about Jesus, but they're unable to shut the fuck up, which sets a precedent that Christians would continue to follow for at least 2,000 years in running. <laughs> and they were also definitely communist. No Clearly. question. They go out of their way to remind everyone that the apostles acting under Jesus' command were absolutely positively communist. Yeah, Jesus and his crew would have chosen the National Socialist Party before they chose the Tea Party. Right. Mm -hmm. GOP Christians... uh sure you're all listening. Better or worse, you're supposed to be bleeding heart liberals. Rich people tricked you. Read the fucking book. It's right, right there. there. In fact, like, God is such a commie that in chapter 5, when Ananias has the audacity to give the apostles only most of everything he owned instead of all of everything he owned, God strikes him dead on the spot. And his wife, just for good Right, yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Now, meanwhile, the priests are getting more and more pissed about all this magical healing Peter's doing, so they throw him in jail again, but this time God sends some angels to break him out, which is kind of a cool scene, I guess. Yeah, so they catch him, flog him, and tell them to shut up about all the Jesus stuff again. Then each of the apostles empowers seven uh, uh, sub-apostles, I guess, right. and each of them gets miracle powers, too. Hooray! They go out and yeah. miracles miracle. for... 
Everyone. And, and one of them is a dude named Stephen who also gets arrested for being all Jesus-y. Yeah, but during the trial, the judge notices how smoking hot Stephen is. So they give him an opportunity to summarize the entire Pentateuch in his defense. <laughs> yes, he does. he does. But then he closes it by calling all of them a bunch of assholes, so they stoned him to death anyway. Didn't, didn't work yeah. so well. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah, the conclusion of his speech wasn't the smartest move. Basically, have you guys read your book? Every time you meet a holy prophet, you stone him to death. Wait, but don't do that to me. That was not <laughs> right. I'm just, <laughs> so, just so, saying. It's a bad idea is what I mean. And apparently Saul, who we meet with no fanfare whatsoever, watches everybody's coat while they throw rocks at Stephen. I guess that's his job. He's the coat watcher. Then the Christian persecution starts to ramp up, and they scatter the followers of Christ. And Philip baptizes an Ethiopian eunuch. Very important that we know that. Yes, for and then moment. we get Saul Paul's road to Damascus moment, which basically goes like this. Saul's running around killing Christians when Jesus shows up and says, why you got to be killing my people, motherfucker? And he strikes him blind for three days. Oh, yeah. Then um, Ananias shows up, but not the one God killed for being stingy. There's they, like three yeah. Ananiases they, in this They just couldn't yes. be bothered to think of they another name. Some more names. Right. Yeah, and touches Saul so he can regain his sight. And, and now the Bible says that something like scales fell from his eyes, so the Jesus splooged in his face mm -hmm. theory does have some kind of <laughs> biblical justification there. Ew. And if you're not convinced, just ask Cash from Atheists on Air. <laughs> he can definitely vouch for the... You know, adhesive properties being suggested in this passage. Oh. Yes, he can. So he stops persecuting Christians and becomes a Jesus freak. Flip flopper. Uh, so then the authorities <laughs> try to kill him. But as we've learned a couple of times in the New Testament, the authorities are awful at trying to kill people. Right. Yeah. So. And here's another part where they blatantly steal from the prequel. The writers are saying the Jews seem to love it when baby Moses escaped in that basket. So we've got to use another basket escape. That's how it <laughs> What if we lower him in a basket through a hole in the city wall? And someone says, okay, but that's a, that's a ceiling. Right. You're <laughs> right. The, the basket thing is great. That's great. But you can't lower anything through a horizontal hole. So <laughs> work that right. writer got fired, and they stuck with the lowering through a wall thing. For some reason, yeah. Book. And then Peter cures a bunch of people. And uh, now I think that's kind of underreported because mm -hmm. according to the Bible, in numerous places, people who believe in Jesus can heal the blind, move mountains, make the lame walk, bring dead mm -hmm. chicks back to life. The Bible is very clear about this. Christians have superpowers. So unless Christians have superpowers, unless Benny Hinn is legit, <laughs> Christianity is definitely bullshit. <laughs> Jury's out. Yeah, then they start letting Gentiles into the religion, and it all goes to shit from there. Right, no and good. now this one had me do a double take. Okay, so according to Peter, there was no cross. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> Acts, Acts 39 and 40, or I'm sorry, chapter 10, verses 39 and 40. Peter's talking to Cornelius and his assembled non Jews about Jesus. Quote, we are witnesses to all he did in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. <laughs> But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Kind of a big thing. I saw that, too. In fact, it struck me as so strange I checked on Bible Hub to see mm -hmm. what the other translations had to say about it. So according to the 21 different Bibles they compile on that site, 15 say tree, 5 say cross, <laughs> and 1 just says crucifixion. Yes. How, how very <laughs> inerrant of them. So, bullshit. I guess all the churches started installing lynching dioramas at the front of the room and it wasn't working out <laughs> right. a religious motif so they switched to the nailed to a cross thing instead and i guess that's a, a slight improvement but still not great <laughs> no still not, not really it's easier to you know have in a a building that just collapsed i guess than a tree <laughs> so now all the jesus jews are pissed that peter taught gentiles the secret handshake but he recounts the vision he got from god all 11 paragraphs of it that we just read in the preceding fucking chapter, so all of a sudden they're cool with it. Then Herod starts fucking with Christians and arrests Paul again, but God sends an angel again that breaks him out again, and everyone is amazed uh, again. <laughs> so clearly they've already run out of ideas. Okay. Obviously. Okay, but let's be fair. It did work pretty well for the plot of International Gorillas. That <laughs> movie much. was great and made perfect sense. Sure. Uh, compared to the Bible, sure. So Herod kills the prison guards and then goes to address a bunch of people from Tyre and Sidon. Uh, but he angers God during his speech. So God kills him right then and there. And worms start munching on his corpse pretty much the instant he hits the ground. That's what they say. Yeah. And in case you're wondering about the historical accuracy of this, 
no, that didn't happen. <laughs> from from everything we know, actually, Hera died before the famine he was supposed to be responding to. So not only did, was he not killed by Jew God, he just didn't even die at this time. So yet again, the Bible gets knowable shit wrong. <laughs> Things that were part of the public record at the time it was written are wrong. Well bullshit, done. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> so Saul, who suddenly became Paul without any explanation at all, uh, goes to teach Sergius Paulus about the Messiah, and a magician tries to stop him. So Paul uses his magic Jesus powers to strike him temporarily blind. And by funny. the way, the magician's name is Bar Jesus. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bar Jesus? It might as well have been Bizarro Jesus, the evil Jew wizard. Jews are bad. <laughs> right. Jews, bad. <laughs> wizard. And another, again with a temporarily blind, like, come up with some new shit, no. just make his dick stock porking or something. <laughs> and again, I, it, it's it's seeing the blinding power of Jesus magic to convince Sergius that Paul is legit. So once again, the Bible is endorsing asking for evidence and requiring proof. Right. Then just as you're thinking, I sure hope somebody summarizes Deuteronomy through Second Chronicles. Paul does exactly that. That's a lot of that. <laughs> and then Paul heals a dude in Iconium, so everybody tries to sacrifice a bull in his honor, and when he won't let him, they stone him and drag him out of the city. But it, it wasn't a very good stoning, apparently, because he got up and wandered off the next day. <laughs> then they all sit down and have a long, overdue, why are we chopping up our dicks conversation. All right. About time. Uh, which they decide that even the foreskinned are allowed to not burn in hell. I'm sure they <laughs> Probably do. Probably makes the faith a little more marketable, <laughs> yeah, I would think. It's right. a good, good call. So the focus groups are going pretty well. Everybody seems to enjoy the plot and the characters. It's just one thing. It's just one little note. The part with the penis chopping. Is everybody tied to that? <laughs> Not at all, even slight. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> right. We're all on the same page. We're going with entire Christian penises well, there was, now. wasn't a lot of fighting in the room, entire was Christian there? But as a matter of fact, they also yeah. dumbed down the 613 commandments for the Gentiles and decide that they, they, they narrow it way down, actually. They decide that you're allowed to go to heaven as long as you don't sacrifice to idols, mm -hmm. drink blood, strangle your food, or fornicate. Mm -hmm. Acts 14, 20, and 29. Nothing about bacon cakes for the gays there, <laughs> folks. No, That's the, all. Lift that one out. Weird. The four command lips. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Then in chapter 16, we learn that God forbids them to preach in Asia because fuck those mongoloids. <laughs> and then in chapter 16, verse 10, suddenly we're in first person. For right. no Nowhere. fucking reason at all, with no fucking warning, <laughs> at the beginning of the paragraph, it's they, and by the end, it's we. Mm -hmm. So fucking confusing. Oh, right? lying. That's called lying. <laughs> <laughs> and the I, they, someone, someone killed my wife, Nicole, and that Jewish waiter. <laughs> So Paul and I go to Macedonia, where some demonic fortune-telling slave girl starts following them around, yelling, these guys are totally legit, for like three days, which apparently annoys the shit out of Paul. It wouldn't annoy me. So he yanks the fortune-telling demon out of her, and this, of course, pisses off her owners, because they were making mad bank off of her fortune-telling demon, so they grabbed us, stripped us naked, beat us with rods, and then threw us in prison. And apparently God didn't have any angels handy because this time he broke them out of prison with an earthquake. And we switched back to third person again. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we get this really involved series of, like, incredibly trivial details about Paul's third missionary trip. I mean, up to and including him getting a haircut in a chapter yeah. 18, verse 18. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Why did they think that was worth including? I guess the... The Piot weren't polling well either, so they went with fully shaved. Yeah, there you go. Still plenty of cultiness, but less of a hassle. <laughs> right, yeah, less, less shampoo. And then we get this weird story about a couple of magicians who try to cast demons out in Jesus' name, but the demons are like, who the fuck are you guys? And they refuse to leave. So instead, the person that the demons are in attack the exorcist, <laughs> strip them naked, and send them running away in terror. This so, all happens in the Bible. So in response, everybody praises Jesus and burns their books. Naturally. Yes, That's very, very pro-book burning message in chapter 19. <laughs> yeah, and during his travels, Paul speaks so long at one point that he basically bores some kid to death. He falls asleep during right. Paul's marathon sermon and falls off a balcony. <laughs> but since he doesn't quite die, they figure Paul must be divine in some way. <laughs> right. It's a miracle. <laughs> yeah, I guess for like the 50th time in a row, an entire city gets pissed about the insane street preaching, so Paul's about to leave. But he decides to try a filibuster at the last right. second to yeah. stall. Or Turns out the 24-hour lectures about anti-Semitism are even worse than Ted Cruz reading Dr. Seuss. <laughs> so some kid passes out and falls out the window. And then Paul runs down there and says, don't worry, he's fine. It's just a, a mild concussion and some light quadriplegia. <laughs> Can I heal him? Yeah, but 
really don't have time if we're going to get through the enormous list I've been reading. <laughs> right. So <laughs> yeah. get back to that. Oh, and by the way, we're in first person again now. Yeah, of course. Right. Then Paul goes to Jerusalem, even though everybody tells him not to. And as soon as he gets there, they seize him and start whipping the shit out of him. Right, right. But luckily, they're they're one of those murderous mobs that shuts up when you ask for a minute to defend yourself. So of course they do. <laughs> he does. So Paul does. Right. And his defense is basically, I'm a Jew, so you know how bad could I possibly be? Right. Well, and right. and then he summarizes the entire book up to this point. As biblical books are wont to do. Yeah, and it just wouldn't be a mid-book biblical summary of the book you're all reading if they didn't fuck up the details and contradict themselves, now would it? So, Paul's vision on the road to Damascus, right? Chapter 9, verse 7, when we first encounter it. Quote, The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they had heard the voice but saw no one. Okay, same story a mere 13 chapters later and two person points of view earlier in chapter 22, verse 9. Now those who were with me saw the light but did not hear the voices of those who were speaking to me. Are you guys even reading this shit? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And as boring as that chapter was, I did find an interesting nugget there. Apparently the first century Jerusalem equivalent of booing was stripping naked and throwing dirt in the air. <laughs> right? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> I'm thinking that would be a really easy response to misinterpret. Yeah, right. And I think they like me. Yeah. It really shows how things evolve over time. Right. Get lost in translation. Because nowadays, if you strip naked and throw dirt in the air, that means I'm a crazy person and I want you to fuck me on this loose pile of dirt. <laughs> right. That's, that's, exactly. what I would, that's how that that's works what now, I would think, sure. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, the crowd is unimpressed and the centurions decide to flog him. But apparently being a Roman citizen is a get-out-of-flogging-free card, so they let him go this time. Well, kind of, but a bunch of Jewish priests are so pissed about this that they concoct the stupidest assassination idea in history, okay? So they <laughs> vow not to eat or drink anything until they've killed Paul. Seems like if you don't get him in the first 10 hours or so, this, this concept falls prey to diminishing returns damn quick, doesn't it? I don't think it worked for yeah. him. Luckily, though, or unluckily, if you were hoping this book would just fucking end, uh, Paul hears about the plot, and they mobilize the cavalry to get him safely to the governor so he can stand trial. Right, but since the governor can't figure out what the fuck the Jews are even accusing him of, they keep him in prison for a couple of years while they try to sort it out. Yeah, so Felix is the guy in charge. He's the governor of... Judea Not and, the cat. and Felix's <laughs> plan was to throw this destitute communist desert nomad in jail till he can solicit a bribe uh, of sandal dirt. Well, I have no right. idea what he was thinking. The plan didn't work. He no, didn't, surprise, didn't get surprise. Any sandal dirt or <laughs> bribes of any sort. Yeah, they, eventually they send him to the king for judgment. Right, but King Agrippa no. also doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, so they send him to the emperor for judgment. <laughs> And then we get this long, completely unnecessary, meticulously detailed description of the boat ride from Jerusalem to Malta. Which okay. actually, honestly, I thought was like the most interesting part of the Bible so far. Mm -hmm. right? It was we just completely cool un... But, ride. you know, you kind of got an idea how they did boats mm -hmm. back then. And then he gets to Rome. He doesn't see the emperor. And he lives under house arrest for a couple of years. And then the book just abruptly ends. Yeah, that was that's it. it. That's the it. End. Just for... <laughs> Slap. <laughs> yeah. Basically, we're left with Paul explaining to the emperor of Rome, you know, listen... Clearly got the Jews under control. They love that book, working great. So just let me pull the same shit with the non-Jews, and that's right. everybody. You control <laughs> all the people at that point. Have I showed you the novel? We've been working on it. <laughs> we got some, good, got some epistles going here. And that's it. We, we, just, we forego any real discussion of Christian theology again, five books in. We haven't gotten any of that so that we could emphasize that both Peter and Paul got their balls knocked around quite a bit for this Jesus guy. But I also can't help but come back over and over again to the fact that in the book, people accept Jesus because they see Peter and Paul perform miraculous healings, you know, wrestle demons, survive poisonous snake bites, that kind of shit. So when did it become a sin to ask for evidence? As soon as somebody asked for evidence, if I had to guess. Right, yes. the evidence book. Yeah. It's all set. Right. Well, for whatever it's worth, all the books between here and the last one are like tweets compared to the shit we've been through so far. So <laughs> Lucinda Heath, thanks again, as always. Good to be here. Gentile Manji. <laughs> <And> Babble. <laughs> Good timing on that one.